eyewitness video is under house arrest in St. Paul is the subject line. This is Eileen Clancy, one of the founders of Eyewitness Video, a New York City-based video collective in St. Paul to document the policing of the protests at the Republican National Convention. The house where Eyewitness Video is staying in St. Paul has been surrounded by police. We have locked all the doors. We have been told that if we leave, we will be detained. One of our people who was caught outside is being detained in handcuffs in front of the house. The police say that they are waiting to get a search warrant. More than a dozen police are wielding firearms, including one St. Paul officer with a long gun, which someone told me is an M16. My name is Sarah Coffey. I'm with the National Lawyers Guild. I was here in the capacity of a legal observer. Um, this house is where a group of journalists are staying. Uh, what's going on right now is that people are inside. The house is surrounded by um, St. Paul police and we're waiting for a warrant. We've been here approximately 40 minutes waiting for a warrant. Uh, I don't think I can lock it from our side. What should we do? We can lock this door. We can lock this door. Okay. Uh, we're standing in the food, front of the Food Not Bombs house uh, in Minneapolis. It's like a collective house that just got raided by a bunch of police. And what time was that about today? Uh, I think about like 8.30, 8.15 they came in. And how did they come in? Um, fucking violently. I think they broke open the door. Everybody was just sleeping and uh, definitely like, pointed rifles and like various types of weapons. I couldn't see a whole lot because I didn't have my contacts in. And um, definitely like a lot of yelling and like um, demanding and like um, one kid was in his room and he was like asking if he should open the door and uh, you know he opened the door and they like pointed guns at him told him to get on his knees and like n you know knee walk out basically and get down on his face they pulled me I was laying on the couch like totally exposed like comfortable on the couch for no reason pull me off the couch make me get on the floor and like fucking twist my arm up and cuff it all like mad uncomfortably they cuffed, Did they cuff everybody in the house? They cuffed everybody with flex cuffs well some of them with metal cuffs um, one girl her circulation was cut off like really bad she kept complaining for like 10 minutes saying that she lost all her circulation and was just like kept saying it and then finally they got her some nicer ones but you know like she was definitely paying for a good while did anyone ask to see a search warrant at that point or what uh, we were doing we after like a couple minutes somebody realized it you know and asked for it and then they said they had to get the place secured before they could show it to us and, you know in due time due time and then they got the place secured and they waited like another like five ten minutes before they finally put on the t they put on the table the house that was just raided um, me and my partner were sleeping and I was naked and officers came and separated us and made me lie on the floor naked for about an hour. Um, and uh, then they proceeded to search and videograph everything that was there. They videotaped everything and then like they took pictures of everything and now they're going through it with a camera and filming everything after taking multiple pictures. Like they took like four pictures of the fr inside of the refrigerator, for example. Um, what did, what were they saying? Like they asked name and IDs um, and addresses, why we were here, when we got here, um, like where our friends were staying, like Gabe was uh, sitting there and this is like the second raid that a five year old has gone through in a span of 24 hours, he's five years old and twice he's been woken and he's like had cops like rush into spaces where he was like either sleeping or like playing uh, apparently i mean i guess like the I, the concept of like feeding people who are like resisting this bullshit is like something that they're hostile to obviously <laughs> Um, we're here to speak out about the activity of um, 
the law enforcement officials, um, but also from the Poor People's Economic Human Rights Campaign perspective, this is not just about protesters versus police. Um, we feel like there's a higher authority that's giving permission to engage in these kind of um, censorship activity of people that are speaking in opposition to this administration. So um, uh, some examples of the things that have happened is um, a few days ago when we had set up here at Harriet Island, uh, we were circled and surrounded by about like 200 police officers, some police officers that were sharpshooters with large rifles and that kind of stuff. Um, the sprinkler, sprinklers were turned on on the children, but then turned off when the police officers arrived. Um, and we were um, totally in the dark. They turned off the park lights. And um, what happened was uh, yesterday we decided, after we were kicked out of here, uh, to take these issues to our capital. When we arrived at the capital, we were um, barricaded inside the capital and then um, the media was prevent prevented from coming into the Capitol during opening hours at the Capitol, including our legal observer, uh, Ted Dooley, who showed his, creden his legal credentials on the window. Um, so we were able to get photographs and film footage of both uh, media, uh, uh, reporters being denied access into a public building, as well as our legal observer being denied access into observe what was happening to us. That's the other part of the plan. The plan is to also create a chilling effect so that people are too afraid to come out and to demonstrate, demonstrate and to say anything about what's happening. Um, First, they just went after people didn't pay much attention because they captured people who were Muslim abroad and put them in detention camps here and overseas, and it didn't get much attention. It didn't get much attention when thousands of immigrants were placed in detention indefinitely. Um, the warnings of civil liberties people was worth, you know, eventually it's going to come home. And that's what we're seeing here. We're seeing the state of Minnesota, in this case Ramsey County specifically, taking the lead in you in the most manipulative, cynical, demagogic, and abusive fashion are using the buzzword of terrorism to persecute people for political dissent, for having unconventional views. All they do is they label people as terrorists and anarchists, and at that point, what people are actually saying and the content of their views has no meaning anymore. What they do is they dehumanize people, they stigmatize them, and in the process, cut off what they're saying. And in this point, not only by marginalizing people and not paying attention to them, but actually using the criminal justice system as a severe bludgeon to cut off people in their efforts to be politically involved. <laughs>
National Convention. I'm really glad a lot of you have been able to make it this morning considering the Smith Street Bridge has been out of commission. I'm not that surprised to be honest um, and I guess none of us should be anymore. So this is a switch. We're speaking to you, the media and the public and we've had a pretty strict media policy for a variety of reasons and I want to talk about a couple of them just to get us all on the same page. One of the things is, is the Welcoming Committee works on a consensus-based agreement policy, which means that as a group, we make decisions together. If we don't agree, we don't move forward. And when we do agree, we do move forward. So it's really hard when you call up or you email and ask a question to one of us because no one person is the Welcoming Committee. No eight people are the Welcoming Committee. There are six of us here, four of us have been released from jail, and four of us continue to stay in jail. No one of us is the Welcoming Committee. The other reason why we've been a little hesitant to speak to the media, or why this media policy has now changed, is because it's become personal. The Welcoming Committee has become a target from Bob Fletcher, Ramsey County Sheriff, and from a lot of other law enforcement agents all the way up the chain. This is an abuse of power, and when the abuse of power becomes this extreme, silence is not acceptable. When eight people that I know and have been working with for the last year are being charged with conspiracy and acts of terrorism, Silence is not acceptable. There are no terrorists on this stage. There are no terrorists in the Ramsey County Jail. There isn't one of us. There isn't eight of us. We are all the welcoming committee, and we stand together today. We're here today to bring attention to the level of police violence that is pretty unprecedented in this country for a very long time. We, uh, many of the people here came to the Twin Cities to protest the Republican Convention. And unfortunately, their peaceful protests were met with indiscriminate police violence. We started the week out with a series of house raids by uh, Ramsey County sheriffs and Minneapolis police and St. Paul police. There were three raids in Minneapolis, two raids in St. Paul, one on the convergence space. Later in the week, we saw 
uh, an array of weaponry used against protesters. We saw police using tear gas, pepper spray, rubber bullets, tasers, and brute force against protesters. Uh, Mayor Chris Coleman made an announcement in the media this morning, today's paper, that said he felt the uh, convention was a, was a big success. He mentioned nothing about police violence on the streets. He mentioned nothing about people being held in jail for longer than they should have been. He mentioned nothing about overcharging protesters. This is unacceptable. This is a response that is completely unacceptable. I went arrived at 12th and Cedar. We were, uh, many people were engaged in a sit-in. I was standing in front of the march holding the banner along with another person. And at that point, uh, the police were trying very much to prevent us from speaking out. <clears throat> I was shot at close range with a rubber bullet. I'd like you to see what happened. Mm. And later, later, I was arrested for unlawful assembly and taken to the jail. I think people have a right to speak out against the war in Iraq and demand peace, justice, and equality. I was glad to participate in the demonstration organized by the anti-war committee, and I commend them for organizing it. And before the march had even started, I was snatched and grabbed by about seven or eight riot police in park property, doing nothing but standing while doing independent media. Today, I have been told that I have a fracture in my arm um, due to the position that they had me in as they drug me into a cop car to basically disappear me and my camera from the day's events. On Tuesday, I met with a group of friends of mine who were going to um, take part in what I understood to be a permitted assembly at Mears Park and all to be followed by what I understood to be a permitted uh, march. And as we started to head out of the park and down into the street in the march route, the permitted march route, um, I was assaulted by cops. Uh, I was never told that I was arrested. I was never told anything at all. I was grabbed by my shirt, taken by surprise, and then knocked unconscious by um, being shot by tasers in my hip and in my butt. Neither of which I knew at the time. I just fell unconscious to the ground. And when I came back uh, to consciousness, I had cops all over me. I had someone kneeling on my head. I had people punching me. I had cops punching me. I was being tased in my hand over and over and over and over in my legs. I didn't know what was going on. I thought maybe at the time that I was getting hit by a club over and over. I looked down and there was just this electric shock being pulsed into my legs over and over. The cops were screaming at me, stop resisting, stop resisting, stop resisting. But because I was having this electricity pulsed through my body, I was having convulsions. And so I couldn't stop moving. I didn't even realize that I had these two uh, taser protrusions still inside of my hip until I was in a car. When I told the officers that I needed to get these out of me, they let me sit in that car with these pieces of metal in me for another hour and a half. I was biking um, alongside of a march, and I, um, a, a, a officer on a bicycle crashed into me, and um, I got up and apologized, uh, and they said I, it wasn't on purpose, and then but they continued to arrest me. Um, stating that I assaulted a police officer. I was then taken to Ramsey County Jail. Uh, several officers uh, opened my cell and said that I was going in a restraining chair. And I asked what this restraining chair was, where were you taking me, where were you taking me? And the officer punched me in the face, right here. Um, he knocked me on the ground, unconscious. Um, and then while I was on the ground unconscious, he took my head and slammed it on the ground and um, reawoke me from consciousness and that caused this gash right here. Um, I, I immediately uh, uh, reawaking uh, into consciousness, I 
began screaming and crying, asking for help why they did that. Um, and uh, several officers picked me up and dragged me out, leaving behind um, a large pool of blood. Guys came up to his cell and told him to shut the fuck up. And uh, we were all making the same amount of noise. In fact, we didn't really hear much from him. But and Elliot was the only one by himself. Yeah, all the rest was. I saw the guard tackle him, hit his head against the ground, and uh, that's the last I saw. But then 13 guards swarmed him. What did you guys see? I was just jumped on him, had him face down on the ground, his arm behind his back, and they were slamming his face in the ground. And after about a minute, yeah, about 10 of the guards came in. They were all standing around, and all of a sudden, I I can't fucking make any assumption. Yeah. But he was definitely screaming like for about 15 minutes, and then there was like a five-minute silence. Where there wasn't anything. Yeah. And then he was dragged out, and he was screaming again after he that. Was yeah. Just... Bleeding from his head quite profusely, from what we saw. He was yeah. he couldn't hardly move. And the... yeah, they had him hogtied, like his arms behind his back, and then they had both legs spread out. So they had him like this, face down, carrying him out. Like every every person in that cell block knew what was going on. Yeah. They took me in. Uh, they uh, then took me into the hallway and put a bag over my head that uh, and I could not see. It was slightly transparent, um, but it blurred my vision and it had a gag around the mouth, so I couldn't make my words clearly. Um, they then uh, took me into a detaining cell by myself with several officers and they began using pain compliance tactics on me. What pain compliance is, it's a form of torture. What, what they did is they pressed right here as hard as they could uh, on both sides. Um, and it's a really sensitive nerve and muscle right there and uh, it hurts like no other pain I've ever felt in my life and um, they tr they wrap my leg uh, around my back and twisted my ankle backwards and it, and I was screaming and crying at this time and the more I screamed and cried the more they would uh, the harder they would press and the more they would twist my ankle. I, I, I'm gonna faint, I don't know what's happening. And then I, um, I vomited in this bag. Uh, they refused to take the bag off of my head. Um, they left that bag on my head for about two and a half, three hours. And um, on top of vomiting, I'm bleeding all over. Um, and they wouldn't clean any of my wounds or anything.